Hello YouTubers, Alaska Prepper here. Today we're going to make some bagels, okay? Excuse me if I'm not talking very loud. It's really early in the morning. It's probably about 4 o'clock in the morning, all right, Saturday morning. Uh, but I wanted to make these bagels because we ran out a few days ago from the last batch I made. And uh, some people have been asking for bagels and sourdough. The sourdough is going to take a little longer because we really don't use sourdough too much here. Uh, I usually make it once or twice a year, once especially for Victor's birthday, right? But bagels we eat on a regular basis, or pretty much whenever I make them, right? But this recipe, ladies and gentlemen, is very easy, and anyone can do this, okay? And it costs a fraction of what you're going to pay at the store. And I personally feel that they're, they just taste better. Okay, but let's get through it. This is the things that we're going to need. Okay, these are the ingredients. We're going to need about four cup, cups of flour, uh, a tablespoon and a quarter or so of sugar, one and a half tablespoons, I'm sorry, one and a half teaspoons of salt. I think I'm only going to use one teaspoon of salt. Uh, one tablespoon of oil. I usually like to put a little bit more. A couple of teaspoons of yeast and anywhere between one and a third to one and a half cups of water I usually warm up a little bit more you can see my water right here and you can see that the temperature of my water let's see let's see if you guys can see this will it go into focus no the light but the temperature of my water right now is about 120 120 degrees all right you want to make sure that it's between 110 and 130. Uh, a little bit on the higher side, probably better. And the reason for that is, ladies and gentlemen, is because when you put your dry ingredients inside your bowl, you know, they're not 120 degrees. So when you put that water in there, it's going to bring the temperature of everything down to below what the temperature of the water is. Bacteria loves to live around 120, 125 degrees. That is what they're more, most comfortable at. Right, and that is the temperature at which they will multiply at the fastest. So we want to make sure that our water, like when I first took this water out, it was about 125. It's about 120 now, which is fine. Okay. Right. And also, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to need, besides this bowl, you're going to need a pot that you can boil water in. And you're going to need uh, a tablespoon of baking soda. Okay, so you'll need a tablespoon of baking soda. And that tablespoon of baking soda will not be added to this mixture. That's going to be used to add to the water that's boiling. And when we get to that step, you'll see why. All right, so let's go ahead and add our four cups of flour. And you can sift the flour if you want to. You don't have to because you're going to end up kneading, kneading this for a little bit. And that's another thing about this recipe, ladies and gentlemen, it's not labor intensive, okay? So you're not going to spend hours waiting for this to be ready, to ra rise or proof or whatever. You're not going to spend hours doing that. You can actually have this recipe done from start to finish and in, in about an hour, I would say, okay? <clears throat> okay, so we got our flour. Let's go ahead and add our tablespoon of sugar. And with this recipe, ladies and gentlemen, I'm using the active dry yeast, okay? So we don't have to bring them to life. They will be brought to life after we combine everything together in here. Okay. We're gonna need a teaspoon of salt, and this is a half a teaspoon, so I'm gonna put two of them. And you can add salt, ladies and gentlemen, whatever you like. You really don't have to. Uh, last time I made these, I made them with a teaspoon and a half. And I think that cutting it down by half a teaspoon would be just fine. Okay, we're going to put in two teaspoons of yeast. So that means we'll put in four of these because I have a half a teaspoon. Just one. 
two, three, four. And then ladies and gentlemen, all we've got left to put in here is our water. See how easy that was? Get a little bit of yeast on that lid. Let's close everything up and put it up. That way it won't be in our way. I do keep the flour out just for a little bit in case I need it to do a little bit of kneading, but probably won't. Now, let's go ahead and uh, combine, our, combine, our, combine our dry ingredients. And I found, ladies and gentlemen, I started using a fork to do this. I think it's, I like it better to do the mixing than to use a stick. It seems like it works a little better, but you can pretty much use anything you want. All right, once you got your dry ingredients mixed up really well, I usually pour all the water in except for like a quarter cup. And then all you have to do is mix this. This recipe is so easy, ladies and gentlemen, that you really don't need to have a KitchenAid. Okay? You really don't have to have a KitchenAid for this. You know, a lot of people shy away from making their own bread recipes. You know, any kind of doughs because they think they have to have mach machinery to do this kind of stuff. And you just really don't. Alright. So, and as you can see, I'm going to need the rest of this water. And don't be afraid to add a little too much water, ladies and gentlemen. If you do, I mean, all you have to do is just add a little bit extra flour in there. And uh, you just don't want to overdo it, all right? Because then you'll take your ratios of everything you're using out of whack. So you don't want to have to add too much. Like to this, it looks like I might need to add just a tiny bit more water, which is no big deal. And I won't even bother warming that water up. I'm really not going to be needing that much in here. Okay. There we go. Nice. So after I'm done with this dough here and I set it aside to let it rest, I'm going to go ahead and read a comment for you all that I received uh, early this morning. So... I think it's an awesome comment and it's not a it's not a negative comment. I'm not really into those. Oh thank you by the way, ladies and gentlemen, on your support uh, on that comment from that guy that was trying to shame me for buying I guess in bulk. <laughs> oh goodness gracious man. Some people I'll tell you. You guys are pretty awesome. And what I like to do also is I like to have my flour right here. That way if I need a little bit to put on my hands, I'll just dip my hand in it. Okay? I know that says pancake, but that's not pancake mix. It's flour. So, all we do now, ladies and gentlemen, is let me go and point this one. For those of you that haven't made bread before, this is it. You're pretty much making a bread dough. Even though we're going to make... Um, uh, bagels with it you're going to just want to knead this a pretty decent amount and the thing about this recipe here ladies and gentlemen is you don't have to let this rise to double the size all we're going to do with this is we are going to let this sit in a warm place for 20-30 minutes and whatever it does in that time it's going to be fine if it doesn't double in size, that's fine. It doesn't have to, okay? And what I really like about this is that you can make these bagels into whatever you want. You can, uh, if you want to add, 
you know, pieces of dry onion to the top, you can. If you want to add poppy seeds to the tops of them, you can. If you want to, uh, you know, make a combination of all the different, you know, like spices or herbs that you like to like put on the top to give it a little bit of a flavor, you can. So, oh, ladies and gentlemen, guess what I forgot to put in here? Why didn't you guys tell me? <laughs> Actually, the recipe would work without a little bit of oil, but we should have a little bit of oil in there. There you go, about a tablespoon. You see, ladies and gentlemen, this is the real deal. There's no editing here. <laughs> and just make sure you need that oil in there, which won't be very difficult. Oh, nice. It's actually making it easier for me to keep my hands clean. And you will notice, once you've done this long enough, ladies and gentlemen, you'll know when you need to stop kneading, right? When you don't, when you no longer have to knead. Because you'll feel the texture of the dough changing as you're kneading it. Okay, first it'll start out as like a grainy texture that wants to fall apart. And then you'll start feeling get more elastic. So this recipe, ladies and gentlemen, is going to make uh, about eight large bagels. And I think today I'm going to make a batch of four large bagels and eight medium ones. See how good that works having that flour there? All you do is you just stick your hand in it. And I'm the only one pretty much here that bakes. So it does stay pretty sanitary. You know, there's no... Because it's pretty controlled. But if you're very picky about that, you can always just take a little bit of flour... And put it in a bowl or a plate with a flat surface. So you can just dip your hand into like that. You know, I just dip my hand in there. Go like that. Alright, almost done with this kneading. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what it's looking like. All right. Okay. Once we've got that there, you can put it down. Let's go ahead and uh, put just a little bit of oil in there. Not a lot. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it in there. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this, I'm going to cover it, and just let it rest for about 20, 30 minutes. I'm not going to bother putting this on a, uh, you know how I normally, if if you've never seen me make, make the dough before, all right, because I have to remember we have a lot of new subscribers. Where I'm at, the temperature inside the house usually is below 70 degrees. It's probably around... In the mid-60s is where we like to keep it, around 65. And I found that that temperature is pretty difficult with that ambient temperature to proof the bread. So what I normally do to proof my bread is, or to proof my dough, is I'll put this on top of a slow cooker and put the slow cooker on keep warm. And that produces just enough heat to proof this dough. We really don't need to do this with this recipe. All we need to do is just let it sit wherever it is for about half an hour or so, right? And it doesn't have to double in size or anything, okay? And then we can go on to the next step, okay? So we're going to let this sit for about half an hour. 
I'll be back here in about a second or two, and I wanted to go over a comment that I received that I think you will all enjoy, and then we'll continue making these bagels. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so we'll see you in a little bit. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. So like I said, I wanted to go over a comment real quick while our dough was resting for a few minutes. So I wanted to read this because I want you guys to see what our community is capable of, all right? Uh, first, though, I wanted to do a shout out to Dr. Kit and to Mark for uh, leaving me a coffee. So thank you guys very much. And no, ladies and gentlemen, it's not the Mark that left the comment that I talked about on our last video. Okay, uh, there's a story behind that, but this is not the Mark that left that comment. He did not leave this comment, so it's not. <laughs> All right, so thank you, Mark, very much. I truly appreciate uh you guys getting me a coffee. Thank you, Dr. Kit. You're always there. Dr. Kit, I will contact you. I saw your message and uh, we will talk soon. All right. So let's read this on this message. And sorry about the screen, ladies and gentlemen. I'm obviously recording this video with my with my uh, <clears throat> excuse me, phone camera. But you can always go back to this message and read it because it's great. And let me go ahead and start it off. And it says, Dear Sir, uh, uh, when people call me, sir, I'm like, man, I'm getting old. <laughs> But uh, I know he's just being polite, which is great. And it says, because of you and other preppers I've watched over the last few months, I am becoming more prepared. I am so very proud of all I've learned, the basic necessary equipment tools I've purchased and gathered all together from our home. But today, on payday, I have budgeted $500 to add much more food and necessities to our stockpile. I'm even more excited that I spent $300 at the Dollar Tree tonight and literally bought three grocery carts full of long shelf life foods, as well as many more items for our medical pile and emergency tools. I also purchased $100 of liquor for bartering and medicinal use. Later today, I plan to use the last $100 of my budget uh, of our base pile to finish buying powdered milk, spam, salt, bags of popcorn kernels, canola oil, and a few more and a few more items to add to our base of our newly made stockpile. God continues to be so good and faithful to provide extra money so that our family can become prepared ASAP. We will then begin to constantly add to our preps. Learn to use our food saver that someone gave us yesterday and put into action all the many things I've learned from videos, canning, dry canning, how to put up flour, etc. I am so much more at peace now that I have begun to do what I believe God has laid on my heart to do as soon as possible. The time is quickly coming when things will become much worse in our nation and throughout the world. Scripture tells us that during the end times, it will only become more difficult and that we should be prepared for this tribulation until Jesus returns and makes everything okay again and for eternity, for those who live with him or for those who live for him. Meanwhile, my family strives to live our lives to the fullest while glorifying our Lord and being prudent by preparing for much, for much harder times. Thank you so much for your teaching and encouragement to my family. I will continue to learn from your videos and apply them to our daily lives. May God continue to bless you and your family during these trying times. And ladies and gentlemen, and I commented, let me see. I mean, I replied and I said, hello, Bill, your comment is the reason I started this channel. I have no words to describe how I feel after reading your comment other than that it makes me very happy to know that you are doing the right thing for your family and for your community. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because what we've built here or what we're building is something good in a world that has a lot of bad. So I wanted to thank you guys because this is a great thing. All right, this is a great thing, and it's because not of me, but because of all of us, because of what we've done here. All right, uh, everyone here 
that wants to is able to encourage others and treat each other with respect and dignity, all right? No matter what your background is, all right? So if you're here for the first time, if you're watching this video for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, push the subscribe button and do something that's going to be worthwhile instead of wasting time. Put your time to good use. Not only will you be entertained by my blabbing, but you will be encouraged by other people that have a similar thought pattern as yourself, all right? And that is, is that ultimately we are responsible for ourselves and our families. And if we decide to rely on someone else to take care of us during the hardest of times, then we've failed. Okay, ladies and gentlemen? So having said that, Thank you, Bill, for the comment. It is priceless, all right? And again, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Dr. Kit, okay, for your, for your coffee that you sent me, all right? So thank you very much, guys. Let me go ahead and break for a second. I'm going to come back and show you what our dough is looking like and show you what our next step is going to be, okay? So I'll be back in a second. All right, now this is what our dough looks like, and look at that. It looks like it just about doubled in size. And I've only let it sit there for about half an hour. So that means that we've got good active yeast working in there. Okay. And uh, this is ready to go. So what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen, is we're going to go ahead and throw this up on the counter. There we go. All right, we'll be done with our bowl now. So uh, what I like to do now is I like to knead it. You don't have to knead this so much. Just maybe 15, 20 times. Okay, and uh, then after that, we're going to cut it into the portions that we want. Okay, so you really shouldn't, at this point, you really shouldn't need too much flour. You might, you know, but have your flour handy. I have my flour right here just in case you need some, but you should really get away. You should really get away with it without really needing too much flour. And like I said, you only have to knead this maybe 15, 20 times. Probably just spend about a minute on it, okay? If we were making actual, uh, like a loaf of bread, we would be kneading it for a little longer. But this right here should be good. I think I feel a little something there. Let me get that off. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can, I can hear the air bubbles popping. So I'm doing this. Okay. That's probably more than 15, 20 times, but the, the funny thing is, ladies and gentlemen, I actually really enjoy <laughs> kneading dough. Okay, so that should be good enough, right? And you can see it. Let, let's show, let me show you real quick. So once you're done, done doing that, I'm going to form it into a ball. Okay. And you can just like that. Okay. So if you take a look at your dough right here, you're going to press down on it and you'll see it pop right up. Okay. You'll see that pop up. That's good. And when it pops up, I, I, I hope you can see this. Let me see if I can hold this close. All right. When it pops up, you should still be able to see like a little bit of that indent. All right, so let's check it out. Like, boom. No, you can't see it on the camera. So you're gonna put your finger on it. And you see right here, it shouldn't pop out all the way. There should still be a little bit of an indent there, okay? So this thing's good to go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cut this into our pieces. Okay, and then we're gonna set it down. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna cut this in half, and there's no measuring here, ladies and gentlemen. If we were making these, well, it looks like we might need a little bit of flour. Let's go ahead and yeah, just a little bit. So, and let me show you how I flour my my countertop, so that you don't have a whole bunch of flowers there. All I do is this: I put my hand in the flour, right? I go like this. See that? 
and then I just go like this. Yeah. That gives it a nice even coat instead of you trying to just throw flour on there and having patches all over the place. Yeah. Okay, so this is one of our halves. We're gonna cut this again into four pieces. Okay, we're just gonna put them over here. Okay, I'm gonna grab this piece here. I know we're gonna need just a little bit more flour. We're going to cut this one into eight pieces. Okay, this over here, this over here. Oops, my towel almost fell. Okay, so what we've got here now, ladies and gentlemen, is we've got four. These are going to be like regular size bagels, like the big ones that you get at the store, okay? That's what these are going to be. These are going to be uh, a smaller ones, okay, obviously, right? So there you go. I'll be back in a second, and I'm going to show you how I shape these because I have a special way of shaping them that's really easy, okay? But you know what? First, before we do that, what we want to do is we want to turn these into balls, all right? And to turn them into balls, what we want to do is fold in, okay? And you see, you've got a nice little ball, okay? That's what we're going to do. We're going to turn them into little balls. All you do is go fold in. All in from each side okay and then you take your pinkies and you squeeze in okay see that and then you end up with a pretty nice little ball okay one more time right. I'm not trying to insult your intelligence ladies and gentlemen but some people have never done this before so you just fold it into the center from the perimeter right from the outside Right, which gives you a pretty decent ball, but then what you want to do is, is you want to take your pinkies and you want to squeeze in as your like that. Okay, see it gives you a nice little ball. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to all of my little ones. I'm going to make them all into small little doll balls, and then I'm going to be back to shape these. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I use to shape them that makes it really easy. All right, and actually makes them look like bagels. All right, so we'll be back in a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back and we are ready to shape these. All right, and what I have here is I have a tortilla press. Okay, I think this is the easiest way to do this, and it comes out pretty good, you know. So Let's do the big ones first. I just take my dough ball. I put just a very, very thin coating of flour there. Okay. I'm going to go like this. It's just like you're pressing a big, thick tortilla. And as you can see, you see when it comes out? That's when I stop pressing. All right. I lift this up. This one might have needed a little more. All right. And then I turn it around a little bit so that I can flatten out the other side. And that's it. <coughs> Now, when you get this, it's going to be pretty big and flat, right? So at this point, all right, at this point, you're going to poke a hole right through it, okay? You're going to put your finger through it like this, and you're just going to go like this. Oh, it's a little something right there. Okay. I'm just going to, what I do is I like to squeeze it, and I like, and don't be afraid of making that hole a little bit big, because it's going to fill in, okay? So there you go. See that? And that hole is going to fill in, so don't be afraid of it being a little bit bigger than what you think you want it, right? You put it right there. That's one of them, right? Let's do another one. Let's get some flour up here. 
I'll do it. I'll do on full speed. That way you guys see that it doesn't take that long. Take it out of the hole. Put your middle finger through it, and just start squeezing together. Okay, see that? Just start squeezing together. Eventually, I'll just have two holes in there, and I'll just start shaping it. And this is the beauty of doing this yourself, ladies and gentlemen. These things are not one of these is going to be the same. Right? They're all going to be different. All right, and I think that's pretty cool. Just put them on your. Let's do a little one. I I like to put them on parchment paper just because parchment paper makes cleaning up a little easier, you know. So this is one of the little ones. That one you could pretty much squeeze in one turn. There you go. All right, so you have the flat old ball. Go ahead and uh, what is this? Flat little ball. All right. So you don't want to stretch this one too much because remember this is going to be one of your small ones. This is one of the little ones that I'm making, so I'm not stretching these too much. Okay, I'll just put it right there. All right. So that's what you do, ladies and gentlemen, for the, for the whole batch. You know, you just just like I showed you, there's another big one. This will be the last one then i'll do the rest of them okay off camera but there we go just put a hole through it put your middle finger through it and you want to try to get that hole as centered as possible okay that way one side of your bagel is not super super big and the other one's super small okay. oh this one's gonna be a pretty cool shape <laughs> this one's all jacked up <laughs> you see that okay so once you put all of these on here you're gonna let them rest for about 20 minutes just gonna put a towel over them you're gonna let them rest for about 20 minutes and then once you let them rest for about 20 minutes uh, we'll come back uh, while they're resting you're gonna want to get a pot of water all right I'm gonna use a saucepan not a saucepan I'm gonna use a pot an actual pot and I'd probably say about put a gallon and a half two gallons of water in there you're gonna bring that to a boil, okay? You're gonna bring that water up to a boil, okay? If you've never made bagels before, trust me, this is what we need to do, all right? So while they're resting there, I'm gonna bring in a pot of water, bring it up to a boil, and then we'll be back, all right, ladies and gentlemen? So we'll be back in a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And as you can see, my water is coming to a boil here, okay? <clears throat> so what you wanna do is, and I probably ended up using about a little bit over a gallon of water, okay? You don't really need that much, just enough to have probably about three inches, maybe four inches from the bottom, okay? And now what you're going to need is, you're going to need about a tablespoon, a little bit over a tablespoon, you know, it's not a perfect size. So right here, I've probably got about a tablespoon and a half of baking soda, okay? So this is baking soda, not baking powder, baking soda, okay? You're just going to dump it in there and... It's going to start doing a whole bunch of bubbles when you dump it in there, so just be careful, all right? See that? Okay, so just be careful when you do this. Like right now, I'm not close. I, my face is not close to, to the water, okay? And you're going to let that just come to a boil. You can see it completely dissolves in there with no problem. You don't have to stir it or anything. So now what I have is I have a straw, I have like a, a reusable straw, and I also have like a spatula that's got holes in it, right? You can use whatever you want to, this is going to be used to take the uh, bagels out, and I'm going to use these to flip the bagels. And as you can see my bagels over there, you can see that they're all nice and rested, they're all already starting to get a little bit puffy. Okay, so what we're going to do now is, this is hot enough, this is, I consider this a boil, okay? What we're going to do is, we're going to place the bagels in there, right? I think I have room to do two, two big bagels at a time and three small bagels at a time. So we're going to go ahead and start with the big ones, okay? And don't be afraid to hold your bagels, see? Just drop them in there. See that? You're going to drop it in there. Once it settles down, you're going to put your other one in there. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to 
you're going to let them sit there for about a minute and a half on each side okay don't be afraid they're not gonna fall apart or anything like that so you want to make sure that you take a look at your watch or set a timer for a minute and a half on each side now the last batch of these that I made I did one minute on each side and I like or we like here the crust of the bagel to be a little bit thick all right so the longer that you let it boil the long the the thicker and chewier that the crust is going to be all right so i'm figuring that a minute and a half would be just right but you may want to play around with it you know maybe at first do it for one minute on each side and see how you like uh how it comes out all right and then uh if you want the crust to be a little bit thicker all right then just go ahead and add a few seconds in this case i'm going to do it for one minute and a half on each side and i'm going to do one set all right and then i'll come back when i've got the rest done okay so i'm going to go ahead and so right now we're at about a minute and 15 seconds and what i use the straw for is, is i just take the straw and i flip them over okay. And look at that they're getting all nice and puffy so what I'll do now is is we're about at a minute and a half roughly all right and it's not a, an exact science if it's a minute and 20 seconds if it's a minute and 35 seconds I'm gonna hurt anything so now all I do is just, just flip them around okay. there you go now I'm gonna let them sit there for a minute and a half and then I'm gonna take them out and I'm gonna place them back on the parchment paper now if you notice You'll see that if you notice over here, you'll see that I don't have my pan Under this parchment paper. I went ahead and just put it right on my counter The reason for that is is that I took my pan that I'm going to put in the oven and I put another piece of parchment paper on it a fresh piece Because I don't like to put my bagels in the oven with the parchment paper wet on the bottom All Right. what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these sit there when I take them out I'm going to let them dry out for about 10 or 15 minutes. I'll even, I'll even assist them for a little bit by tapping them or dabbing them with a paper towel to try and get any foam that's on top of them off of them so they can dry up. Uh, let them sit about 10 minutes and then we'll go ahead and put in the oven. This is a good time for you to start preheating your oven to about 425 degrees. Okay, so 425 degrees is what you want to preheat your oven for. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take these out. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that pretty? I mean, look at this. I think this is beautiful. All right? Take it out. Just place it back on the parchment paper. All right. And now we're ready for our next ones. Might as well get our other two big ones out of the way. Yeah, I think I might be able to throw a small one in there as well. There you go. All right, and then I'll start my timer, and then we'll we'll rinse, repeat again until we've got them all done. All right, when we've got them all done, I'll bring you back and I'll show you what the next step is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is my last ones. I'm taking these out right now. Okay, these are the small ones. I've been transferring the other ones to my cooking pan or my baking pan as I've been doing these and as you can see a second. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this pan over or this pot over here and then I'm going to move the camera so that you guys can take a look hopefully my high-tech camera won't fall all right so there you go now these guys you see um, sometimes it didn't happen this time but sometimes when you're boiling your water and you put in the baking soda sometimes it makes like a little bit of a um, what do you call it foam and the foam sticks to the bagels and then I just come back and I just dab it with a paper towel but in this case they came out perfect okay i didn't have to dab them or anything like that they're pretty much drying on, on their own so i'm just going to take these and transfer them 
And as soon as I transfer them here, I'll move that pin over here so you can see what they look like. And that's what they look like, ladies and gentlemen. And my oven is preheated right now to 425, so they're ready to go in the oven. The next step that I take here is something that you do not have to do. I like to do it because it gives them a little bit of, a little bit of a shine, you know, makes them look a little nicer. So what I did was I just I just make a real simple egg wash. Now, if you want to use an actual egg from the fridge or one that you bought at the store, you can. I just took a half of a tablespoon of my Oxen Farms whole egg powder and I mixed it in with a little bit of water. I didn't even measure the water, you know, because it's just an egg wash, right? And what this is going to do is it's going to give the outside of your your uh, bagel, or at least the top side, it'll give it a little bit of a better crust and it'll give it a little bit of a shine, okay? So, and when you put this on, put it on liberally. You don't have to worry about if it's wet or anything like that. Like to get them in there too and you'll see when these come out sometimes you know the dough acts differently every time but sometimes the dough will crack a little bit and it'll have pretty cool patterns and stuff and i know eventually you're just going to eat it right so as long as it tastes good but it's always nice taking something out of the oven and having it look pretty cool you know because you made this all right and, and we're not being artists here, ladies and gentlemen. So you don't have to be like perfect. You don't have to cover every little spot, okay? But do be a little bit liberal with this. You don't put on a little bit. Don't be afraid to get your bagel wet, all right? Don't be afraid to use your egg wash. And as you can see, about a half a tablespoon of the oxen powder ended up being just right. right. There's a little bit left over. Okay. Put another coating on these guys. I think it's gonna come out really pretty. And ladies and gentlemen, once you make this, it's not all about saving the money. It's about the taste too. When you make these, you will notice, or when you eat them, you'll notice that they don't have like a factory flavor. You ever notice that when you like eat bread and make your own bread? The bread that you buy at the store or bagels or anything like that, it's got like a factory flavor. Like you can tell that it was made in a production line. Whereas these, you'll be able to tell like, wow, this is such a better flavor than the stuff that I pay six, seven dollars for at the store, right? And as always, I feel it's a lot more gratifying making it yourself. So right here we made, we've got four large bagels and we've got eight smaller bagels, all right? So what I'm gonna do now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna place these in the oven, 425. I'm gonna leave them in there for 20 minutes, then I'm gonna check on them, all right? At 20 minutes, if they're not nice and golden brown, I'll leave them in there for another five, six minutes until they're nice and golden brown on the top. And they should be in about 20 minutes, okay? Depends on where you live, where your altitude is and all that kind of stuff, okay? So you'll have to play around with the time, but a minimum of 20 minutes, they should be done in 20 minutes. But if you have to leave them in there an extra five minutes or so, it's not going to hurt anything, all right? So I'll be back when these bad boys are done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. And check it out. I took these out about five minutes ago. So they've just been resting there for about five minutes. And that's what it looks like. And they feel really nice too. So I'm going to cut one of these open so you guys can see what it looks like inside and everything. But first, and I'm going to do a, let's see. I think I'm just going to do a small one. It's kind of early still. Do you see that? And uh, let's see if you can hear the crust. See that? And the bottom is a little crunchier too. See? But it came out really nice. <clears throat> but I, I wanted to do a little bit of AP math with you guys. 
before I cut into this. So I figured that with a five pound bag of flour, you can make this same recipe four times. Okay. It's actually a little bit more than four times, but it's, it's four times more than four times, but less than five. So we're going to call it four times. You can make this recipe. Now we're going to use regular numbers as if you didn't find it on sale or anything like that. And let's say we're using organic. So if you guys saw one of my last payday preps, I think it was the one before this last one. I purchased some organic flour at Costco's and it was 20 pounds. And I believe it was like $10, right? Or $10 and change, but we'll call it $10. So if it's a five pound bag, that would be $5 for a five pound bag, right? So I was paying about $1 a pound, right? Actually, no, that's wrong. You see, this is AP math. I paid $10 for two 10 pound bags. So it was 20 pounds that I paid $10 for, meaning that I paid $5 for one 10 pound bag. Now, if we cut that in half, it means that I paid $2.50 for five pounds. And with five pounds, we can make the same recipe four times, right? So we take $2.50 and divide it by four. You're looking at about 65 cents, right? Roughly, all right? So let's just call it 70 cents, okay? We used 70 cents of flour. We used one tablespoon of sugar, a couple of teaspoons of yeast, uh, one tablespoon of oil. And what else did we have in there? And then we also used uh, about a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half of baking soda to put in the water to boil our bagels. So ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to get at here is, is that if I pay full price or if you... If you pay full price for organic flour and use good ingredients, you can make a batch of these bagels for less than $1. I'm going to call it 75 cents. So what you see here, all these bagels you see here, you're looking at 75 cents plus whatever little bit of energy that it took you to do it, like my LP, my liquid propane. I actually figured out how much liquid propane I use for every hour that I have this oven on, you know, so I probably used about maybe at the most 50 cents, at the most 50 cents of liquid propane. So we're going to say that we did this entire batch with all the costs involved for $1.25. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know that if you go to the store and you buy yourselves a bag of bagels that are the regular size. They usually come in six or eight. You're going to be paying three, four, five dollars, depending what kind you get. And trust me, these are much tastier. Okay, so you do the math and you do what's best for you. I would rather spend a dollar and a quarter making these myself than to pay someone three to five dollars for something that was made in a factory and kind of like in an assembly line, if you want to call it that. Okay, so let's see what this looks like inside. Ooh, it's still nice and uh, it's still nice and warm on the inside. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. It's nice and chewy. This is a nice chewy bagel. It's going to come out good. And the crust came out just right, leaving it there for a minute and a half a piece. All right. So now it's a little early in the morning yet. It's only like seven o'clock. So I'm not going to go with cream cheese. I do have my coffee ready. So we're just going to put a little bit of butter on this. <laughs> uh, I'm getting excited. Remember I told you guys I don't eat a lot of junk food? You're like, but Alaska Prepper, you don't eat that much junk food. Then why are you such a fat body? Well, because I like to eat good food. All right. There we go. Let's give it a taste.
<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to find this at the store. All right. I truly encourage you to try this at least once. Because I know that if you try this one time, you're not going to buy bagels anymore at the store. You're going to make them at home because these things are delicious. Delicious. And the quality is so much better than the stuff you buy at the store. When you cut into a bagel at the store, they're on the inside, they're dry, they're flaky. And if you do go to a bagel shop where they specialize in bagels, you're paying so much for one bagel. I mean, go to a bagel shop and buy one bagel with a little bit of butter on it. You're going to pay two, three dollars. You're going to pay three times more than what it would cost you to make this whole batch in one bagel. Whereas you can just spend one morning, one morning of your weekend or one morning during the week when you wake up early to before you go to work and put in a few minutes of prep time. And then about 25 or so minutes of cook time so that you can have a batch of bagels that not are they as tasty as heck, but they don't have junk inside of them. And they're not costing you so much that you can't only but afford to go there once or twice a week. All right. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is definitely a winner. And I'm going to enjoy this with my coffee. You see, I didn't take another bite because I'm waiting to enjoy it with my coffee. That's waiting for me at my side table next to my chair. Ladies and gentlemen, I... Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, I ended up leaving these in the oven for 25 minutes. Okay. I came back and I checked on them at 20 minutes and they were a little lighter than this. So I left them in there for 25 minutes and they're perfect. Okay. And, and the, the little bit of the crunch in the bottom, you will really enjoy the crunch in the bottom there. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, I truly hope that you enjoyed this and that you got something out of this, but more so I hope that you guys try this because this is definitely worth doing. If for any reason, so that you can save some money, so that you can use that money to prep, all right? And this is something that if you get good at doing this, which is not difficult to do. You saw I did it. It's not hard. But if you get good at doing this, it's something that you will already know how to do if the time ever came where you had to make your own food from scratch, all right? If you're so well off right now that you don't have the time that you just rather pay the money if you know how to do this now, if the time ever came that you had to rely on yourself to make your own foods like this from scratch, make your own breads, make your own hamburger buns, things like that, you already know how to do it and you wouldn't have to start learning from scratch. You can practice now, get to know how to do it, and you'll be much better off. But trust me, trust me when I say this, if you try this, you will keep making them because these things are by far better than any of that crap you buy at the store. Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for joining in today. All right. Always have lots of fun on Sundays when I chat with you guys. I think doing this on Sundays instead of Saturday and Sunday is much better. All right. So always have lots of fun chatting with you guys on Sundays. It, it really revives me. All right. After a long week, you know, and then Saturdays, taking care of all the shores, it, it really does uh, do my soul a little bit of good. All right. So thank you so much for joining in. I hope you had a great time today with us. Um, thank you to all the new subscribers. If you're watching this for the first time or if you're joining in for this first time, please subscribe. All right. Uh, thank you for joining in today. For those of you that are that are here every time I put out a video, thank you very much. I truly do appreciate all of your support. If you want to support the channel, ladies and gentlemen, give this video a like, leave a comment, share it with someone you love, right? And also take a look at the links on the description. There's ways there that you can support the channel that don't cost you anything, okay? There are ways that does cost you stuff, but there's ways that don't cost you anything, okay? So please help to support the channel so that uh, I can continue doing this kind of stuff uh, with all of you. And more, more importantly, so that I can continue doing some giveaways. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and announce this now. Next Sunday, right? So what date is the next Sunday? Next Sunday is the 14th. 
next Sunday, I will be doing a giveaway. All right, I'm actually going to be giving something away during the live chat. All right, so please join in next Sunday because from now on, when I do my giveaways, it's going to be during the live chats, okay? Now and then, I may choose to do a giveaway from the comments section like I've been doing in the past to give some people or some of our community members a chance that are not able to be here on Sunday to enter to win a prize. But most of the prizes that I'm going to be giving away now will be during the live chats. Okay, so next Sunday, please chime in and we will be doing a giveaway on that day. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you very much. I hope that you've been having a very good weekend. I hope that you stay, stay, that you stay safe. All right, be safe out there. Enjoy your time. Love your family. Remember to be good to each other because when good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper, and I'm out.